Hey, it's Tidepool Tim here, and we have a little find I wanted to share with you. We're talking about arthropods, crabs in particular, and uh, we have a lot of different crabs on the coast of Maine. We have rock crabs, Jonah crabs, we have uh, hermit crabs, we have spider crabs, toad crabs, and green crabs. And there's an Asian shore crab, which is an invasive species. But just want to quickly show you here, I flipped over a stone doing a little tide pooling. And initially you look under, you see some dogwinkle eggs, you see a few barnacles on the rocks, moss animals, big mud star right here. See that guy? See him over there. But looking down underneath the rock, which is usually the most interesting area, you scan around, you don't really see much living down here. But believe it or not, there's a crab hidden. So once again, when the tide goes out, the little invertebrates that are living within all of the seaweed, they got to find a place to hide for a few hours until the tide comes back in. So if we look under here, initially you don't see much. Well, there's, there's a little sea, another little sea star. And here's a little sea star. So you start to pick out things. Here's one other little sea star. But we, we go along and look. Look right here. What do you see hidden down? It's made itself a little burrow. There's a little green crab. Now this green crab is hoping I don't see it. I'm just going to prod him a little bit and you'll see this. I don't know if it's a, a girl or a boy. He's starting to move around a little bit. His legs moving. It's like, hey, leave me alone. I'm waiting for the tide to come back in. Okay, we've got to be careful because green ca crabs can really give you a good pinch. Oh, boy. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's a female. She's a beauty. Look at that shell. Green crabs uh, aren't originally, or weren't originally on the main coast. They came in from uh, kind of the European peninsula on ships in what's known as, or it's speculated that they came in on ballast water. I'm just going to rinse this green crab off so we can see her better. Put her down in the water. Rinse her off. The way I know that this is a female crab is, see that tail right by my thumb? It's kind of in the shape of a spade or kind of a rounded tail. That's a female green crab. Oh, look, she's trying to pinch me. Ooh, that's pretty close. Oh, she's getting very close. When you hold a crab, you want to hold a crab pinch back two legs. Look at her hang onto that rock weed. Okay, come on, let go, let go. Let go. Oh, geez, we're going to have to extricate her. There we go. Hey, that little greenie. She's hanging onto the rock weed with her, one of her claws. Come on, let's pull that stuff away, so can see what's going on. It's a little bit hard. I apologize for my my camera. I've only got two hands here. See that beautiful shell? <laughs> only problem with green crabs is being an invasive species. They uh, come in and wreak havoc with the ecology of the area. They eat. They're a predator and they're eating things that ordinarily didn't have a predator in this area. And green crabs are one of the few crabs that when the tide goes out they can they can live in the intertidal area. So they crawl up. Most of your crabs are out in the water, down 50 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet, where these green crabs climb up the beach, and they eat little anemones. They eat baby snails. They crush clams. They eat clams. I mean, they're hungry like everything. And uh, there we go. We got that rockweed out of there. See that tail? Little pinchers. So when I hold a crab, I hold it right by its back leg so that it can't bend down with its pincher claws and get me. This is the green crab. We used to have tons of them out here in our bay, but now they, uh, they seem to have died off and they're not hard to find. But typically in the past, if you rolled over a, a stone about that size, you might see 10 or 15 green crabs. But now I can, I can uh, flip over 10 or 15 stones before I'll find even one. So what we're going to do with this green crab, set her over here in the water and you'll watch her head back into her preferred habitat. And boy, isn't she going to have a story to tell her family. She goes down into the water. Oh, she's hiding. Let's put her out here and do that again. That's pretty neat. Here you go. Remember, crabs walk sideways. She goes. See you later. And she will just move sideways until she finds a little stone to go under and hide. And in probably 20 minutes or a half hour, she will be happy to go foraging for food. And she may find things like these blue mussels. 
and use those powerful pinching claws to crack those. And I can, you know, probably crack one of my fingers. Yeah, see? Crack that, and then she would be eating the contents of a, of a blue mussel. Here's another blue mussel that that green crab may eat. And let's see if I can... Oh, I cracked it. Eh, there's not much in there for, for food, but enough, enough for a green crab. All right, that's it on green crabs. And you can see here this tide pool I was in getting a horsetail kelp uh, is underwater. And tide is creeping in. Right out here you can see current as the tide races in to fill a huge expanse. There's about 20 miles of bays up in this direction to the west that will fill up with water. And around noontime it will be high tide. And then the water will all start to flow back out and empty.